Hey, well, uh, you are doing great. So in this lesson, I want to share one more thing related to the pay of Jasper with another approach, and then you can apply it in the real project easier. So let's talk about the problem first. So let me try to open the browser app here. So you can see, for example, I open the application, and if I click on the login here, you can see if I click on login, we have email test field, password test field, and the login button here, right? But if I click on the sign up here, I have email, password, confirm password, and the sign up button here. So you can see the similar things, the common things I mean between those uh, from here is the email and the password. You see the email and the password is something common here. And a little different here is uh, that's on the sign up. From we have confirm password and the sign up button, and here is the login button. Okay, so those are the differences uh, between those forms. So now we already have a base object for the login form, right? But now we have a common thing here. So how can we handle that? So in this case, instead of create a new uh, pay object for sign up form only. What I want to do that I going to try to reuse the common part here between them. And then I will create, uh, try to, you know, refactor the login page and I will create a new pay object for the side of form. And then I will use that common part as well. So now let's go back to the card and then I will show you how to do it. Okay. Let me try to close all of the opening now. So inside here, we have the components bucket that we created before, right? So now I will create a new one. So this one, uh, this component related to the, you know, uh, authentication, right? Authentication feature. So what I want to do that I will create a new package related to authentication. So under this bucket authentication, I will create a new Java class with the name uh, I will call that credential uh, form. So basically, the username and the password I will call is a credential form because when we, you know, when we talk something about related to credential, we often say about the email test field and password test field, right? So this is the credential form. So the way we construct a component is just similar like the way we, you know, construct a pay object. So let's try to open the pay object here and then you can see what we need to do. So come back to the pay object here. We have one Appium driver here. You see Appium driver, mobile element here and the instant private instant Appium driver because we need to have an Appium driver to find the elements on the screen. And then we have some private property with the name keyword file here and mobile by accessibility, something like this to keep the, you know, the property related to the selector for our element on the page. And then we will have some main methods here. So we have login base here as a constructor like before, right? And then we have uh, something like, you know, get Appium driver and then I will return driver in this case. And then this is the username, input username, input password, something like that. Okay, just similar. We will do similar like before. So now let me try to have some private uh, thing first. So I will have something like, you know, private. The first thing is the private Appium uh, driver. So in this case, I will specify mobile uh, element and then I will call it something like IBM driver. So this is the, the thing I want to have. And now I will generate a constructor. So in this case, I will generate a constructor with just one, the one parameter here because when I create a new instance for that component, I need to have the IBM drivers instance to use uh, in the instant to find out the element on the base, right? So click on OK here, and then we have a constructor here. Now I will continue to uh, creating orders uh, property related for our uh, selector. So we already have for the username and password here. So 
what I do, I just simply copy them over. And by the way, sorry for any background noise around, okay? And then I will put this here, right? Uh, I will put it here. And now I will have some main interaction methods like before. So in this case, you can select the, uh, you know, traditional one. I mean the traditional pay object, or you can select something like uh, with the method chain in here, uh, we can return this or something like that. Okay, so we have input username, input password, something like that. So for the username uh, and the password, let me try to copy over those things. And then we can reduce here and here. Let me try to copy this one, credential form. I base them here. So you can see we have, uh, not this one, this is the constructor from pay object. So we have the username here, the best work here. Uh, we have, uh, it was not the constructor, sorry, but let me try to move the scope of this method and then we can see easier. So this one is not login based method chaining, but this is the credential form, right? Let me try to copy and paste the credential form here, credential form here. And we have, let me try to delete this one as well. So I think we have a new credential form, just similar like a pay object uh, before, right? And okay, this is the credential form. And what I wanna do that I will use this credential form in the login page, right? I wanna do in the login page. So, uh, I will try to copy the original login page with method chain in here, and then I will rename it as something like login base uh, with uh, with component. Yeah, because you know, um, basically you can try to you know uh, rename your existing pay object, and then you can you know modify. But because I want to keep the consent and then I can put in my personal block. So I just want to create a new class here. So login with components. In this case, I hit OK button. Now, uh, I will try to delete something related to the email and password here, right? And then I will delete this methods. I will delete this method and those methods as well. What I just keep here does. Uh, I have a one constructor here, as you can see, and the login button here. I don't think I need this this get store because I don't need to uh, get the APM driver from the pay object. I have the login button here, and I have click on login button here. Yeah. Okay, and now I will import the you know uh, I will have another private. Uh, component. So in this case, I want to create a private component. Private in this case should be credential form. Uh, credential form here. Credential form. So when I create the credential form and then when I call the constructor, I will call something like credential form equal new credential form and I will input the FM driver here for it. So now I will have a one getter here. So public uh, credential form uh, should be credential form in this case. Then I just simple return the this credential form. But you just simple return the credential form. That's good uh, enough. So this does credential form. Okay. So when we call something credential form, it will return the instance of the credential form object here. That's we already have the at the time we create a new login page okay so this is the credential form so now i want to test this out so just go to the test here um you can go one step forward that you can create the side up here as well okay but now i want to test this out first so let's go back to the pay object here we have something like you know set value with term with main interaction method now I will try to copy this one and then set value with uh, perm and this one um, pay of chess model and 
I call something like pay object model with component. Okay. And the the name here is not good in the real case, but in the real case, we don't need to have something like with component or some, something like that, right? But I just want to distinguish between them and you say, uh, and, and as you see here, the class name here is not following the convention because uh, a class name should start with an uppercase, okay? But just please ignore that because this is just the practice purpose, okay? But just making more clear, let me try to change it to an uppercase here. And then now I open it. We have the IBM driver here, file element accessibility, login to click on the login, and then login bay here, new login bay. We have input username, input password here, right? So in this case, what I want to do that, I will do like uh, login bay dot credential uh, dot credential form. Oh, not the login bay. This one should be locking bay with component, right? Equal new locking bay uh, with component, and then the locking bay now credential form dot input username, and then uh, I will do something like locking bay dot credential form dot input password here. And then the login base, click on the login button. So you can see the credential forms now is a part of the login base. And then it will be a part of the, the side of page as well. Here, this is the side of page, right? So now uh, I want to run this one. So first thing you need to start on the Appium server. And by default, it will start on the box 4723. And the script, as you still remember, when we call something like get Android driver, if you try to, you know, connect to the Appium driver, I don't need to explain this from beginning as well, right? So now I hit on the run button here, run this one, and then we can observe whether it's run successfully or not. Let's see. Okay, it's sending the capability to the Appium server here. And then if I open the device, the visual application here to observe, this is still the old screen, okay? still the old, uh, the old screen. So uh, the Appium server is now trying to communicate with the bootstrap block here to launch a new session for the application. Just wait a little moment, okay? So here, let me try to get this one and then we can see what's going on. Okay. Now it's gonna launch, you see? And if you hit on the login button, input the, uh, the email, but work we'll click on the login button. Everything just perfect, right? So just try to summarize a little before we end in this uh, lesson. So now just go back here. So first thing first, the best practice, you keep something like in the component package, and then you can see we have another package related to the feature that you are uh, you know, you have in your application. So in this case, this form related to the authentication feature. So that's why I created another package with the name authentication. So here in the credential form, everything just the same, you know, the way you create a pay object and the way you create a common uh, component, just the same, everything just the same. But the small difference here, if you open the pay object where you not this one, uh, where you, you're going to use that component. You can see now we have another property from that component, you see. And then at the time uh, in the constructor, we will try to create a new instance from that component. And then we introduce a guest to return that instance, the instance of that component. So now we are where you want to use, you see, very simple like before. So you create a new pay object which contains the reduced for component here. Everything the same here. You see the pay object is uh, the, the way we create a new instance is just the same. And now the little difference here, instead of, uh, instead of calling directly the property like before, you call in the, the instance of the, the reusable component here, and then you call uh, the things inside, in this case, input just name, input password. And then you can use something like, you know, it's not 
common here out there just belong to the login page. So you can do one step forward that you can try uh, to have that uh, reusable in the, you know, the sign up, in the sign up component here, the sign up page here, right? So you can create a new page with the name sign up page and then you can reuse that component. Okay, so I think this is very much for this lesson. Uh, try to explore around. Uh, bye for now and see you in the next lesson.